day's finally come. We're lowering the dually. So going on about three weeks now, I got this kit from Switch Suspension, which is going to be a 3-4 drop for the square body dually. And I'm super stoked to put this thing on. What we've got in this box is going to be rear shackles, which is going to be 2 inch, and then it's actually got a bracket, which you'll see in just a little bit, that is the hanger for, I believe it is the front, hanger of the leaf springs and what that's going to do is move that up an additional two equaling four. In box number two we have a set of three inch drop spindles and oh lord this didn't great. They're already coated. I don't know exactly who this kit is made by. I do now. It is straight edge. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to start out in the rear get the old Carolina squat going on and then we'll jump up to the front. Ready? Break. Okay, so the first line of attack we're going to be doing is there's a shackle right here and that's where your back of your leaf springs. So this is the rear of your truck. That's what we're going to be snipping off first. We've got this new drop shackle and I'm pretty sure most of them are. So this is going to be one inch drop and then the top hoe, if you utilize that, that's going to be two inch. The higher basically your leaf spring goes up, the lower your vehicle is going. So we're going to be using the top one to get that full four inch drop. We are going to be taking this plate here, the front hanger is what it's going to end up being. And we have this plate right here and same scenario, you're going to have one inch drop and two inch drop. We're going to be using that second hole because we want to get the full four inch because if you got four inches on the table, you might as well take it. Am I right? First thing I'm going to do is be getting this thing off the ground real quick here. Just so we got some unsprung weight on those springs and we don't have the hose truck sitting down on those. I'm going to opt to be extremely lazy during this process and Keep the rear dually wheels on at all costs because who really wants to take four wheels off the back if you don't have to? Alright, so the head side of our bolt is going to be, I guess it is a 7 8 And then the stud side, I guess I should say the nut side and the stud side is a 13 16 I don't know how fun this is going to be. Well, we got the nut loose, but the bolt is not turning. Which sometimes these things get pretty rusted up in here and they can be a bit of a bear. Long winded thing here. Alright, I got that loose. Now I'm going to run that back on there just a little bit and then we'll tap that with the hammer and hopefully we can jar that thing loose. Now that top one it's not going to be able to come out because it'll hit the frame so what we'll have to do is we'll have to get this lower one out first. On either side bring that rear end up and then we can help that bolt pass through our leaf springage. So that one's spinning, so that's at least a positive. Also, if you're into dualies and dually builds, head over and check out Yeah Buddy Garage if you haven't already. He's got a pretty sweet crew cab he's redoing. Also, you get a little hammer here. We'll tap this one and we'll start kind of massaging on that one a little bit. I have soaked these down with some penetrating oil so that'll hopefully creep in and start doing its job a little bit. So I think that one's going to be fine. So let's go ahead and remove this one. I'm able, I got that one all the way knocked against this side so I think once we go to Waller that thing up, it'll slide right on out of there for us. And the kit did not come with any new bolts here, so I will be reusing these. Alright, 
All right, we had a little bit of tension that lifted up a little bit there, so just be mindful of that. Also, I do have this thing supported up there by the cab, or I guess by the gas tanks, so make sure you do that before you start on doing any suspension parts when you're under here. Swing it over here. I'm going to do the other side real quick. Then we can slide this thing up and get these top bolts out. Alrighty, so now I'm going to jack up on this rear end. Hopefully we can get enough height out of this thing to get them out. Woo! There they go. <laughs> Alright, now we can successfully get these out, slide our new shackles in, and bolt everything back up. Alrighty, old shackles out. As you can see here, the two, quite a bit of difference. So we've got the two drop holes up here, and like I said, we're going to be utilizing this top one. Slide everything back in like so. As you can see, we're already almost home, and that has went up quite a bit. Slide this bad girl back through here. We'll slide over to the other side. Drop shackle in, that way we're not trying to fight ourselves. And then we can slide this bottom bolt in. All right, I'm gonna jack this up real quick, put a little tension on stuff. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this stuff down real quick. And most of your factory style nuts are like some kind of a lock nut almost. It's like they've almost got indentions on the end of them to keep that nut from wanting to back off and vibrate off or anything like that. Alright, on to the other side. We'll drop this thing down. I'll give you an idea of what a two inch drop would look like on the back of your door before we do that front hanger. Alright, I'm going to drop that down. You can get an idea of what a two inch drop would look like if that's something you're wanting to do on yours. We've already got just a little bit more drop for sure. So it's hard to tell while it's all sitting in here, but it's almost sitting pretty much level right now. But that just ain't going to cut it for me. But if you're just wanting to drop this thing or drop yours on the cheap and not go real crazy, um, I think a shackle kit is like a hundred bucks or just a little bit over. So, so definitely something you can think about. All right, I'm going to get up in here. We're going to start working on this front hanger. Um, it looks like the same bolting as we had in the rear for the rear shackle. And it's kind of hard to see, but you got to go up and over that little shackle and that little bitty gap right there to get to the nut. And once again, this thing's got to come out this direction. Then we got to go in, drill out that series of rivets in there, and then the kit that we got over yonder. It has bolting that's going to go back in place of that. <sighs> and we got gas tanks on either side, so really don't want to get a torch or grinder in there, so I'm going to just try to center punch those as best as I can, and then run a drill bit through them. Woo! Alrighty, so about the last 30 minutes, I've been getting acquainted to my air hammer here. I got a chisel bit on the end of this thing, and I went on the inside and knocked all those rivets off. Now you do have to have a pretty strong air hammer to do that, but I just kind of worked it back and forth on those rivets. And I was thinking while I was doing that, you could also have like a multi-tool, the little oscillating things you got in there with the, like a metal bit, cut them things off and then you can drive them off. But that is very noisy. I had the old ear protection on. <laughs> Layla even has hers on. Let's see if we can see her real quick. She's always fired up when she gets to put those things on. Not, but I'm gonna slide underneath here real quick. And uh, I've got another little bit here that goes on the end of the air hammer. And I'm just gonna try to drive these things out, kind of give you an idea of what I did. Whew, that was a workout though, I'll give it that. All right, so right here, hopefully you can tell, there was a rivet there, there, and then there was another down here. If you are doing this, just be, Mindful of brake lines or gas lines or anything like that. You don't want to get into those 
or you'll be replacing them as well. This is that little bit that I was telling you, so now I'm just going to come back through here and basically tap on the back side of these and that is going to snip those out hopefully and then we will be moving on to putting the new brackets on. As much as I would love to show you all this, um, it is pretty hard underneath this truck to get myself wedged up in this position, let alone get a camera in here. So you just got to use your imagination and take my word that we're gonna, just going to pop these things off. And once I do, we'll get you back in here and we'll see everything. One of these days I'm going to get a lift in here. That way I can set a tripod up right there looking up. Not anytime soon probably though. Onward and upward. Or I guess I should say downward since we're lowering. I don't know. It's getting late. My jokes are getting bad. <laughs> but I did not. Whew. Let's put these other bad pajamas on. Alright, so the kit comes with that little bag of bolts there. And that's our new shackle. the old cutoff wheel out and we knocked our two overload or I guess just one overload spring but I cut it on either side of our u-bolt so all of that is still the same we didn't have to unbolt anything and yes that could have been the easy way out but I'm all about it now we need to get over here and put our drop hanger on here the kit only comes with four bolts unfortunately so i think later on i'm gonna probably snip in here and put one in the middle probably don't need it ever but it just makes me feel better we already got the holes there so might as well also on these holes they need to be drilled because the bolts are slightly smaller so just got a bit here stepped it up not exactly sure what size that is but it's just slightly larger than our bolt and I'm just drilling these out well unfortunately i just seen our whole drilling process was cut short due to memory card shortage so i apologize on that you did miss me burning the ever-living crap out of my lip with a piece of metal that I was drilling. <laughs> the metal shaving came down and hit me right in the lip. So that's fun. Try to get one of these bolts started here. There we go. It comes with a canut and a flat washer and putting those on the back side. Alright, I got that jacked up a little bit. I'm going to just kind of try to drill this to align this a little bit better. Sweet. We can tighten these down, throw our bolts on, and we can call the back done, I think. Uh, I played around with the jack a little bit and got us pretty close, I think. Let's see if we can't get this thing slipped in here. Just a slight tap tappy. And that's good. Now, I will say. This is an absolute pain putting this nut and washer on the back side. That's the only downside. Yeah. There's our washer and our nut. Yeah, oh yeah, got her. All right, let's see if we can't get this thing tightened down. Then we can drop her down and see what we got. That's the most exciting part of any lowering kit, in my opinion. Seeing the final 
product. All right, who's ready for the grand reveal? I got both jack stands out so we can let this thing down. Shoo, doggy. We low. Man, that looks killer. That stance literally couldn't have came out any more perfect for what I was wanting. Now we gotta tackle the front. She's coming down three inches. This thing's gonna be sick. All right, so got her front wheel off and we're gonna jump right into this because I am really, really excited after seeing the back end of that thing. So I'm wanting to get this thing done. These are pretty different. There's like a wedge in here, basically. This little set screw here holds this in place. I had never even messed with these until I got this dually. My buddy Luke pulled this off and he's like, what the heck is this? <laughs> and me and him were both like, I don't know. But that wedge drives out like so. It comes out. I'm gonna keep all that and that little Allen sits down in there. It's a pretty wild setup, I guess. It's pretty quick and painless for the most part. So on this, we got brand new calipers and we got brand new pads. So everything should be pretty sweet on that end of it. Stay right there. Gotta get me a strap -a later. All right, now we need to get our dust cover off here, which is recessed way up in here. I'm no dually guru, so I don't know, I'm new. I don't know what to do. Looks like somebody RTV'd this dang thing too, so oh, this may be fun getting this off. I seen some movement. We got her. Somebody put a little RTV on there, I guess, to keep her extra stuck on there. Then we just got tie rods and ball joints, and then we got to slip on that new one. We also got a new shock to put on the front here. I'll show you why here in a minute. Well, somebody RTV'd the cap, but they didn't even bother to bend over our solder pin there. Inch and a quarter fits it pretty good. I know I don't need an impact for this, but it's here. There's our bearing. I want to hold on to that. Ugh. Definitely greasy underneath here. Come on out of there. Yeah. Oh, it's the little victories in life, I'm telling you. <clears throat> Alright, before we get too carried away of dropping this spindle or removing any of these bolts, I want to make sure we get us a jack underneath here, because if you don't do that and you release either one of these ball joints, that thing is going to shoot down with all that spring pressure. No fun. Don't look like we have any cotter pins in this lower one. It's appearing to be the same lay up top here, which is very odd. Okay, we got the top one loose. Bottom one's being a little bit weird. I'm trying to find a proper socket for it. Like I said, this does have a lot of crap on it, so that could be a good indication of what's going on. All right, I cleaned up on that thing and we ended up having a cotter pin in there. That's why the socket would not go down on there correctly. So let's see if we can't break this thing loose now. <clears throat> Here it is. Hopefully these old ball joints aren't gonna be too stubborn. And we can get these this spindle off without too much of an issue. Got our upper broke free here. Got her. Should put up a little bit of fight. Wasn't too bad though. 
I've had them a lot, 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 lot worse than that. <laughs> Start throwing stuff back together here, hopefully. And I did notice whenever I had this off, the upper does take a carter key too, cotter key, however you say it. So we will be slapping one of those back in there. And our beloved ball joint is spinning. New Carter pins real quick. Carter, Carter, tomato, tomato. Daggone thing there, you know what I'm saying? Now we just gotta get our tie rod back together here. Oh, of course there's gotta be some kind of snafu. Oh, always something. It didn't feel like it wants to go at all. Feels like our taper's on the bottom on this do we swap them let me read the constructions because it feels like our taper is on the bottom so maybe we got to flip it since this is a drop spindle i've never done that before but maybe because it's a three inch drop spindle you got to flip that tie rod let me look at the instructions real quick so sure enough i uh adjust or took this loose right here and just turned this over and the taper fit fine i think that'll be absolutely fine and it didn't say anything in the instructions of having to do that. Maybe just be on the lookout for that if that's uh, if you're doing this kit because I wasn't really expecting that. Kind of threw me for a little bit of a loop. I need to get an alignment on this thing anyway, probably. All right, our inside bearing looked pretty good, but our outside, I think I'm gonna go ahead and throw some grease to it. Because I don't think it would hurt at all. I think that would definitely help the life of this thing a little bit. I don't think I can get that thing to rotate one more time. There we go, we're pretty close. I like it. I'm going to opt to leave the RTV off. Pretty happy with that. Just gotta throw these brakes back on and man, we are D-U-N. Can't help but love messing with wheel bearings. Goodness, something's in my pants. All right, finally got that, I guess. Goodness, I don't know what this little cave cricket deal is walking around, but I think that's what was in my pants just a minute ago. Good Lord, look at this thing. What on earth is even that? That thing was wallowing around inside of me. Just trying to finish the truck here. We do need to change this shock out real quick. Let's say if we can't do that. So that is the reason we needed to change this. That top bushing has been completely wore out on this thing. And the shock's pretty dead too, so. I got some new drop shocks over here though. Got some nitro drop twos. I know that I don't really need a drop shock right now. I'm just running a drop spindle because it really doesn't change anything, but I figured if I was gonna buy new shocks, I'd at least want to have something if I do go lower in the future. We've got what we need. Oh yeah, make it a little wider down low. Be good to go. Alrighty, we are officially done on the driver's side here. So, I don't know, it's 10.30. I stayed out here till 12 last night, so. I may go over there and start trying to get this thing done. That way we can all see this thing. But for you guys, it's going to be the same amount of time, so it don't matter. <laughs> so, 
We'll either see it here in a couple minutes or I'll see y'all tomorrow. I'll let you know momentarily. So I am tinkering a little bit tonight. So I just want to show you there is a hole right here in the hub. And that is what actually allows you to snip in there and get a screwdriver in behind that thing and pop her out. Learn something new every day. But I guess I could have done some Googling. But we got her the other way too. Well, I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't think I could be any happier with the way this dually turned out. It is pretty much exactly where I wanted this thing on a drop. It looks perfect with the running boards. I just think if you get them too low with running boards, it just looks kind of weird to me. But I think that's about perfect. If I didn't have the running boards, the 6.8 would be perfect for this truck. I am stoked and it's all done. The only thing that I do have left is once we got that upper shackle on in the front there's the overload tab that is hitting right now and we're just probably gonna have to go in knock the rivets off of that and lose that for right now it should be fine to cruise this thing and i'm going to so i'll let you know <laughs> we'll go back in later and cut that off so yeah let me know what you'd like to see with the old dually next this was one of my big items that i was wanting to get off the thing it just feel like it makes this truck kind of mine now and it just kind of gives it that custom look to it without being too extreme i think it's very usable still and i'm sure we'll put it to the test <sighs> that's all for this week i appreciate you sticking in and as always hope you have a good one get out and work on something and i will see you on the next one